It isn't who starts, it's how you finish that defines success in the finals. In game one, Cheryl Ford was injured and out, and so in came Detroit's reinforcements to impose their will down low. Kara Braxton and Planette Pearson owned the paint and put up big numbers as the Shock set a finals record for points scored. Detroit is doing what Detroit does. The Mercury, meanwhile, meant business, with Penny Taylor and Cappy Pondexter combining for 59. But Detroit put the D on Tarazi, and foul trouble did the rest. In the end, all Diana could do was wait for game two. They meet again in the Motor City, with the Mercury needing to get in gear, and the Shock hoping to keep accelerating. Either Detroit will deliver another W, or by the time they get to Phoenix, the Mercury will be rising. The WNBA Finals, Game 2. The city of Detroit is dressed for success. The defending champs looking to take a commanding two games to none lead against Phoenix in a best of five WNBA final. Cheryl Ford, she's in the starting lineup looking to test out her knee in game two. Kara Braxton stepped it up in her absence in game one. Can she come through again? And for Phoenix to get in the win column, Diana Taurasi needs to do a lot more production in the scoring column. And welcome to the Palace of Auburn Hills. Back with Hall of Famer Nancy Lieberman and Coach Carolyn Peck. I am Linda Cohen. As you can hear, this place is rocking and ready for their shock. But the situation for Phoenix, they're in a virtual must-win situation, looking to even this thing up. And Nancy, how are they going to do it? Well, they had some problems in game one. I think some of it is obvious that they missed 48 shots. They turned it over, and Tarasi was in foul trouble. That's what happened in game one. This is a team that's very young and very inexperienced in the finals. But if they go 10% smarter basketball and 10% playing better basketball, I think they're going to be okay, Carolyn. They must have Tarasi in the mix. I think she has to put her imprint on this game. Well, Westhead asked her, asked her and gave us another Shakespearean quote. quote. He said it's going to be, he asked her to be or not to be. And quite frankly, Tarasi looked at her and said to be. But I think Phoenix has got to find an answer for Detroit's inside game. The post play gave them 55 points and 29 rebounds. That's what the Phoenix Mercury have to find an answer for, Nancy. What are they going to do with the big girls inside? Diana Tarasi must hit the three for it to be for the Mercury. And they got to worry about Cheryl Ford. Yes. All right, enough of the classic literature. Let's get this game underway as the shot. are looking to take another step to their third title in five seasons. Time for the opening tip. Here's Terry Gannon and Doris Burke. All right, Linda, thank you very much. It's very hard to follow up on Shakespeare yes. and take it to the next level. Doris, how about this series, though? I think that it's at least as much about executing a dictating style of play as it is about making adjustments between games. I think that means Detroit will try to once again overwhelm Phoenix with their power game. Phoenix will make minor adjustments defensively in that rover defense, but the reality is this. Diana Taurasi must be as special as she was in helping lead Connecticut to three national titles. That means on the floor for more than 20 minutes. Yeah, she can't sit down for much of this game for them to have a chance on the road. 27 records, by the way, were set in game one. It was a shootout. Our Toyota starting lineup for the visiting Mercury. Kelly Miller leading the way at the point. Kepi Pondexter with 27 in game one. Didn't shoot all that well, though. Tarazi struggled. Henny Taylor had a huge game. 32 points, 9 rebounds, and 7 assists. And Tangela Smith inside as well has to play big today. For the shot, Swin Cash, Katie Feenstra had a great game. Cheryl Ford, there she is in the starting lineup today. Deanna Nolan, dangerous at the guard spot. And Katie Smith, the all-time leading three-point shooter in the history of the WNBA. Let's get... More from Rebecca Lobo right now on Cheryl Ford, who is in the lineup here, Rebecca. Terry, she is in the lineup after missing game one because of the knee injury. She told me the knee is still very sore, but feels better than it did a couple of days ago. She does not know how many minutes she's going to be able to play. It all depends on how she feels when she gets on the court. Trainer Laura Ramos will keep an eye on Cheryl throughout the game to see if she is running and jumping and pushing off the way she wants. 
But if even if she only plays a little, she has already given Detroit a boost. Cheryl told me her teammates got all geeked up when they saw her in uniform. And over on the west side in her uniform, Heather Cox. Thanks so much, Rebecca. Detroit has won all three meetings against Phoenix this year, holding Diana Taurasi to just 10 points per game, to which Dee told me I don't care about my own numbers, but I care about those losses, especially the last one. The last one, of course, game one. The shot held Diana to just 10 in 22 foul-ridden minutes. The common denominator in all three games, Taurasi has been guarded by Detroit's Katie Smith. Paul Weston assured me Dee will have a great game in game two. We'll see if Katie Smith has something to say about that. All right, Heather, thank you very much. Just about set here and underway from the Palace. Lisa Mattingly, Michael Price, and Kurt Walker, your officiating crew today in game two of the WNBA Finals. Diana in that rover defense playing the rover position. First turnover of the game on the first possession. Here come the Mercury Miller to the hoop. And Deanna Nolan picks up her first foul. Back to what Heather was talking about. For Paul Westhead today in his second year, guy who's won an NBA title back in 1980 with the Lakers, coach with the Bulls, the Nuggets, longtime head coach in college basketball. He wants you to run. He'd rather see a missed shot than a turnover. To Rossi and Pondexter, I think, in the first half the other night were much too excited. I think they were too fired up and maybe weren't patient enough. I thought, exactly, I thought they showed the impatience of youth. I know you can never go too fast. The Phoenix writer calls it a, a pace between visible and vapor, but yeah, they pressed. Visible and vapor, I like it. Smith with the miss. Cheryl Ford right away the offensive rebound and the foul on Penny Taylor. So Ford in the lineup today for Bill Lambeer, a couple of titles as a player, a couple of titles as a coach. And the matter, you know, if you weren't a fan of Detroit, you hated Bill Lambeer as a player. Knows, Maybe you feel the same way about him coaching the WNBA. The guy can coach. There's no question about that. And he's uh, he's gotten them here again. 03, 06, and now perhaps on the verge of winning the title in 07. Chance for three and five years. A dynasty has the Pistons. And I'll tell you this about him. He gets the best out of his players. He's built this team very much the way the Pistons won games. You talked about it the last time. This is a blue-collar Detroit kind of team. Bad boys back in his day. The bad girls today. So Rossi guarded by Swin Cash. Pretty good matchup. Smith more of a perimeter player, even though she's a post player. Miller in and out. She may be the key today for that. Yeah, uh, you talk to the Detroit staff. They feel like if Miller gets shot, she could hurt them. Now you're in, D. Now you're in, D. That's, That's where Detroit did all the work in game one. Katie Feastra on the post her first button. Can't get caught in fool's golden trade threes with Phoenix. Quick three from Diana Tarazi off the mark right away. D putting Phoenix up by one. Remember, the first time in the national stage at college in the Final Four, she was brutal against Notre Dame in the national semifinal, was in tears, Terry. She responded by never losing an NCAA tournament game again. You got to believe, like Heather said, three, Paul Westhead thinks she's going to have a great one today. Three national titles after that. Player of the year a couple times in college basketball. She's one for two so far this afternoon. But when she takes eight shots in a game, mm. I don't think they can win, even with Penny Taylor, Kathy Pondex. I agree. Swing cash, a little bit strong. Feenstra, another offensive chance. Smith, who struggled from the floor during the playoffs. Blocked from behind by Tarazi, out of bounds. 17 on the shot clock. Inside D. Inside D. Play inside D. You heard Paul Westhead say play inside D. Looks down low. She is that rover in that 3 2, that 1 2 2 defense, if you will. Covers a lot of space inside. They throw it away right to Cappy. Crossover off the glass and in over Kenny Smith. So her first bucket. Bill Lambeer. Yeah, very passive early on. Yeah, Cappy Pondexter in the open floor. A very tough check. She could shoot the jump shot or go right to the rim. Great handle. She was three for 15 in the first half in game one. Smith, that holds one home. Eighth-year player out of Ohio State with the three. Tangela Smith. How about the early going in this one back and forth? Love Tangela Smith's ability to shoot that trail three. That's exactly why Ann Myers and Paul Westhead wanted her. A post that can run and make perimeter shots. Remember, they had the number one pick and traded it away for Tangela Smith. Took some heat when they did it. Ann Myers-Drysdale 
In hindsight, everybody's cheering that move. Win catch, 15 footer up and good. In and out for Cappy. And Detroit will look the run. They're not going to walk the ball off. 108 points in game one. They would like to see this thing in the 80s, and there's a silly foul. Two doors for a player as good as Tarazi is, as talented as she is. She does tend to commit these type fouls. Yeah, and it's silly. These are fouls that don't matter in the regular season. This is a finals game two. Diana simply cannot waste one of the six that she'll have today. Kara Braxton Double off down. the bench with the ball right now. A huge game for her the other night. 19 points, 12 rebounds, but the offensive foul. Third turnover. Well, Heather Cox talked about the matchup. This is what Diana Tarazi has done this season against the okay. Detroit Shock. Five, five, and six personal fouls. The field goal percentage has been brutal. And the best point she made was it's Katie Smith, who's an underrated defender, checking her. Katie, a very physical defender. D drives and kicks. Out to Miller. That's the second time she's had it halfway down and came out. Got to keep shooting those if you're Kelly Miller. Play that ball. Nolan can rise off the dribble, especially. The double team down low, tip away, and that's what they'll try to do defensively. Fade away for four. But when that ball goes inside, Phoenix jerseys surrounding it. Yeah, that's the one adjustment. They will guard from the inside out. If they're going to concede something to Detroit, it'll be the jump shot. Angela Smith on fire early. Yeah, once it was Thiestra, this time it's Braxton. Both refused to get out or get out in time to check that jump shot. A lot of threes up there in the okay, early going pass. today. Okay. Braxton, the reach by three seconds. They were in there forever. And the call, Lisa Mattingly making that call. Got to move before they raise the parking rate in there, Terry. We got four turnovers, all right? Let's go. I thought you were going to jump out of your chair. Well, I'll tell you this. If you're as big and strong as Detroit is and you're Phoenix and you don't match up and they get six or seven seconds in the lane, you're going to be in trouble. Seven of Phoenix's first eight shots. Now make it eight of the first nine have been threes, and that was halfway down. Nothing you can do about that as a shooter. Yep, there's the double on four. Now, what you tend to give up then, obviously, are shots by Katie Smith and Deanna Nolan. Yeah, and Katie it's Smith has not shot it well yet. High, low, tipped away. Good defense by the Mercury. I got five turnovers. Play yourself, Deanna, play yourself. Taylor, who had 32, tied a record in the finals the other night in a losing effort. Good shooting. That was Nikisha Sales, who had 32. That's whose record she tied. That was in a losing, record, uh, losing effort. Miller doesn't have the numbers. Often it doesn't matter for Phoenix. She looks tired. Penny Taylor, and this is a team that plays at breakneck speed, had trouble making it over the half court line. First turnover for Phoenix, but they're up on the road. 12 8, your score here in the first. WNBA title on the line, the trophy as well. Detroit looking for their third. Diana Tarazi and Phoenix, their first. ESPN's presentation of the WNBA Finals, brought to you by Toyota. Moving forward, AOL, the official online media partner of the WNBA, Adidas, the official outfitter of the WNBA, and Discover Card. Get the new Discover Motiva card today. Just under five minutes left here at the Palace of Auburn Hills. Diana Taurasi trying to lead Phoenix for their first ever WNBA title. One of the all-time great college careers, but it did not start well. As you mentioned, Doris, in the final four at first time, one for 15 against Notre Dame. Yeah, national semifinal after the game, she was absolutely distraught. There were questions all over the country. Could she ever get that mojo back? But guess what? She sure did. Yeah, got it back and then some. But check in with Heather Cox. More on Tarazi right now. Heather? Well, guys, on Thursday morning, as Diana was trying to get over her frustration from game one. Former UConn teammate Maria Conlon brightened her day and her outlook. Diana told me that Maria texted me to remind me the last time I lost a game in the playoffs, we won three national championships in a row, and that made me smile again. We'll see if that smile continues today as Phoenix tries to get the split here in Detroit. Yeah, and Paul West said in the huddle the other night, reminding them almost laughing late in that game, saying, we're going to win the five-game series. It's not a one-game series. It's five. I love his demeanor. This team responds well to this guy. 
Lynette Pearson, who had a huge game in game one, Braxton to follow. Braxton had 19 points, Pearson had 26 points, 10 rebounds. At the other end, Taylor hit as she goes to the hoop. Well, this is what Detroit does. They try to use all of that size and girth inside to get second chance opportunities. We asked Paul Westhead about it. He said, well, he said, we're trying desperately to grow taller. We've been in the weight room seven times between games. Yeah. He said, guys, there's not an answer for that. We're going to make some minor adjustments and we'll see what happens. And I do think that's why it's more about whoever can dictate style of play because they can't really adjust down low. Yeah, but, Detroit's going to dominate the glass, and Phoenix helps not the paint as well. And for as poorly as Phoenix played the other night, you get virtually nothing from Diana because she spends most of the night on the bench. Cappy doesn't shoot it well, and with under two minutes to play, you're within four. Yep. Down Phoenix down started down well down in game down one. They were up by double digits, up by 11. Detroit came back. In fact, they've had their biggest comebacks this year yeah. against yeah. Phoenix. Penny Taylor whistled. That's her second. Third team foul. One to give. One to give. Wow, 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 wow. Wow, wow, wow. Huh? You got the coaches wired for sound. Paul Westhead, Bill Lambeer. Wide open is Katie Smith. Too wide open. Go, go. Pass got hit. No call. They scramble. Go, go, do that. Go, go. <laughs> Pondexter. Oh, nice shot. High in the air, too. Kathy Pondexter, second-year player out of Rutgers. She's got four. Good screen from her teammate, Diana Tarazzi, to get her open. They need to do a better job of creating shots for each other. There's the double on Pearson. Nice cut by Braxton. Smith the block. Good help defensively. Phoenix more active on defense in this game. Much better job helping inside. You saw no one was in five feet of Katie Smith. They will concede that jump shot, I think, until she starts making them. He can't grab it. Read a little, Cappy. Read it down. Taken away briefly by Taylor. Knocked out of bounds. Kelly Mazanti set to check in. Kelly Schumacher as well for Phoenix. Katie Finstra is going to replace Tara Braxton. Schumacher, a UConn grad in her seventh year. And Finstra in her third from Liberty. You got him now. Good catch, John. Coming through. Catch, John, to the baseline. Cash rattles one home along the baseline. That was what was so successful against the zone in game one, Terry. They overloaded one side and got quality shots. Swin trying to stop Tarazi, two UConn stars, but the offensive foul called on Diana Tarazi as Katie Smith stepped in. And that's what Smith got. High call. High call. High. Second foul on Tarazi. She's in the air. He feels like she was in the air, meaning Diana Taurasi before Smith had defensive position. I think it was very near the basket. I'm not sure about that. Obviously, in the WNBA, you don't have that semicircle like you do in the NBA. I'd like it in college and the WNBA, to be perfectly honest with you. Smith on the reach. I got this one. And Miller would go to the line. I'm not so sure about it. Baseline. I mean, in the in the NBA, you've got guys We watched them dunking. carrying the ball. Over here, when Sarasi came, she wasn't up like this. She held it, hesitated, and then stuck it back down again, okay? I know you have Come on, you got to call so. those. I mean, you can play. But just Third team foul, and Beer wanted to carry. Yeah, he's, this has been a big point for him all season. He believes that there's a lot of WNBA players who see Cheryl Ford back with the ice pack. So how effective could she be? Rebecca said she was sore. He believes, and Tarazi, one of those that carries the basketball, gets that palm underneath. Everyone does. Correct. Yeah, it's it's how much you do it, how glaring it is. Nolan. Go, Matt! No, Deanna Nolan wasn't a huge factor in game one, had 11 points, five rebounds. Tarazi found a clear opening and is going to let it fly. And you asked Paul Westhead yesterday, did you not think that Diana Tarazi and, and Pondexter rushed some of their shots? He said there is no such thing. Yes. Doesn't believe. I don't think that's in his vernacular. Smith on the reach and one. Feeds for the bucket. I'm going to give some credit you know to the I said, for You this need club. to step up high and be in the basket area. That's why the I'm triple team, that. therefore, you get one on one isolation with six foot eight being guarded by a much smaller defender. Give some credit to the Detroit assistant coaches, Rick Mahorn and Cheryl Reeve. What a job, Rick in particular, working with Katie Feenster to make her better.
D. Yeah, stay, Matt. 14 fouls so far on Phoenix. There is Rick Mahorn, the former bad boy, along with Bill Lambeer. She Together been, again. Yeah, she's been highly productive since the midpoint of the season. Tarazi taking this first quarter over. No stopping that. She's got eight. Not too hard, Maz. Runner! Runner! Shannon Johnson, the veteran who got the start the other night in place of the injured Cheryl Ford on the floor right now. Here she is. Up and under past Mazanti to the right hand. Good block by Schumacher. Not able to throw it off of Kelly Miller. It'll be Phoenix basketball. Well, wasn't a foul, Lisa. Well, wasn't a tipping foul. I don't think it was a tripping foul, Terry, because I thought it was a loose basketball, and both players Four are up. entitled to Four it. Four up, Joey. Get to the flash. That's what Ford did the other night. Relegated to cheerleader status. And right now on the bench for a while with that ice pack. Schumacher. Miller kept it alive, eventually Smith. Boy, how many balls does Kelly Miller get her hands on? Such a relentless player. Come on, Maz, get in there! Feenstra way off. Detroit is 29% so far from the floor. So the Mercury got it, got it. eight point lead. Uh, give me a four get, four get, four get. Get down, shoot. Four get. Sally, get the kick out. Tarazi feeling it a little bit short with that. But a fresh 24. Same play, four get screen for Pondexter High. Taylor inside, Nolan caught on her. Bit of a mismatch, and the foul be... Well, initially, Lisa Mattingly said before the shot. We'll see. Both ways. Next one, we're both ways. It is before the shot. As we check in quickly with Rebecca. We you saw how wrapped up Cheryl Ford's knee was. A couple seconds ago, Bill Beer went over and wanted to put her in the game, but it took too long for them to take the ice off her knee. As a result, Kara Braxton has to go in. You wonder how that's going to impact things if they have to keep wrapping it like that every time Cheryl comes out of the game. Yeah, she looks upset, Rebecca, and as you were given that report, she was kind of rolling her eyes. Is that frustration that they weren't able to get her in there? Oh, the shot. Who was a foul? Too far, get. Too far, Lynette get. Pearson, Bill. <laughs> it was on Pearson, her second team score. Two three zone now by the Detroit Sharks, so they come out of the man to man. Belinda Snell on the floor, she can shoot the three. Started the playoffs terribly, had a pretty good night in game one though. Thrown away, here's Nolan on the run out. Nobody's gonna catch Pretty Bird. And the whistle before the fast break could start was sorted out. We have to have 41 31-9. Before they even threw a ball, Goss had a stop. The ball's in the air, Michael. He's had a steal. Just because you can't hear my whistle doesn't mean I didn't blow it. I heard your whistle. The ball was in the air. Where your turnovers occur is so important. If they're at the free throw line with bad floor balance as it was there, and you're in a foot race with Deanna Nolan, forget about it. That girl is as fast, and you yeah. said the other night, with or without the basketball in her hands, I'm not sure who can catch her in this I league. I think she beats anybody yeah. up the floor, whether she's got the ball or not in this league. The foul's on 23 down here, right? Lisa, no one has, has one foul. foul no there. one has one foul, right? Yes. <laughs> Boy, it'd be so great for him to be able to hear me. We could sort things out for him. I'm sure he'd enjoy that. Uh, yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> Back to the 2-3 zone. Seven-second difference, game clock, shot clock. Good work eventually, somehow, some way, it got to Taylor. Hey, Katie, Katie, Katie. They're going to blow the whistle Katie, again. Yeah. I don't know if there's a problem with that start of the game clock or what. I think they're having trouble with the clock, and that's why Lambert was upset the last time. There was a ball in the air that they were going to steal, and they blew the whistle to sort out the clock. And he was hoping to push the pace right there on the inbounds. So without Tarazi, it's Snell who's in that same position, the rover spot, as they call it, in the zone. Smith says, I'll shoot right over you. Man, I'll tell you what. 
You got on three the baseline, Doris. So it's not a foul. It just goes back to the, to the Mercury. Yeah, three bodies around her. Ke Kelly Schumacher cannot make that six-five free and any Let it go, Kat. Let it go, it Kat. That'll be it. Here in the first, the Mercury comes out shooting threes, including Diana Taurasi, who was red hot. Eight-point lead for the Mercury on the road. Detroit's turned it over seven times already. Beautiful day in Michigan. Detroit leads 1-0 in terms of games. Phoenix leads 25-17 in terms of the score today. Paul Westhead taking you back to his days in L.A. with the Lakers. Look at Pat Riley with the huge L.A. type glasses, Hollywood glasses back then. The Lakes, of course, won the title back in 80, but Westhead's run and gun style takes him all the way back to the days at LaSalle. George Mason, Oral Marymount, great numbers there. Look at what they've done with Paul Westhead. 68 games since, and the bottom of your screen, folks, four playoff wins, only three in the history of the franchise prior to this time. Assistant coach Bridget Pettis with us right now. Before we get to the X's and O's, coach, what's it like to sit on the bench next to a guy with not only the the past, the experience, but also the demeanor of Paul Westhead? Oh, it's awesome. I mean, we're, I'm, I know I'm in front of greatness right now, and just to learn from him and, and just have this experience is something that's phenomenal for me. You needed him to arrive earlier in your career because you were perfect for that system, Bridget. But let's get to your team specifically tonight. On the offensive end, much higher percentage. You look so much more comfortable. What are you doing better tonight? Well, the first thing is Diana's on the floor. So you have a key player like that on the floor, and that's what we want to hopefully keep players out of foul trouble and do what we do best, and that's rebound, play defense, rebound, and run the ball. Run the ball. Best of luck doing that the rest of the way, Coach. Thank you. All right, Bridget Pettis, an assistant for Paul Westhead, who... Back in the days as a small college coach, went to Sonny Allen. You know, he used to teach me your fast break style. Sonny taught him everything he knew and then said, but you got to be crazy to run it. And Paul West has been crazy ever since. The WNBA fans familiar with Sonny Allen. He was the first head coach of the Sacramento Monarchs. Quick swing of the basketball. Tangela Smith up top. Here's Pondexter. Snell can shoot the three from Australia. Not this time. Here comes Huey Johnson. Pondexter stepped in, got in the way, and that's a foul on Cappy, your first. The difference in approach already by Paul Westhead. What do you notice here at the start of the second period? In managing Diana Tarazi in terms of her two personal fouls, Paul has decided, let me sit her on the bench for a couple minutes. Buy my, we have the lead. We're comfortable. Let's buy her some minutes without putting her on the defensive end. Stay home a little bit. Stay home a little bit. Good look inside to Cheryl Ford, who's back on the floor. Chance to get her in after that break. Four-point game. Ford's got three. Smith never saw him. Two players whose motor races more than anyone right there. Johnson and Miller going at it. Off the heel for Smith. On Snell, as Tarasi comes back into the game, we send it to Rebecca. I'll tell you, Bill Van Beer said he feels very comfortable playing a fast pace, but he wants smart possessions. And that last huddle, he said, we're jacking shots too quickly. Slow it down. He also wants his post players to do big duckins when the ball is up top, like it is right now with Katie Smith. He said it's a simple game, right, guys? Don't turn it over. Don't turn it over because Phoenix is going to get lots of possessions. Inadvertent duck in there, high low game. The miss by John by Spin Cash. He got hit inside of the head. Happy. Locked by four to the left hand good. And to Rebecca's point, Terry, it's easy to get caught in Phoenix's pace and take shots quicker than you want to. You can't be opposed to transition if you're a transition team, but you cannot take as many threes. Yeah, pick your spots. Don't slow it down, but dictate the tempo of the game. Johnson nails the three, top of the key. Remember, she's off the bench, but she's a four-time All-Star in this league, Shannon Johnson. She's had her biggest games this year against Phoenix, too. You okay, Cheryl? Cheryl, you okay? Oh, you heard Bill Ambeer ask Cheryl Ford if she was okay running up the floor. She said, yeah. Stay down. Stay down. Stay down. Go down, low, D. Down, low, D. And the foul on Taylor. That's just a tough assignment. 
because Tarasi's trying to do a lot in that zone. She's being forced to move, and you put your defender in a difficult position as Taylor picks up her third now. Yep. Phoenix, is, they're just having a hard time because there's so much movement in Detroit's offense right now. You're okay, Phoenix? You're only at 22 here. Dexter didn't get fouled on her drive. You're only at 22 right now. I didn't have a whistle call. And Cash buys it. So game two here today. Game three will be at Phoenix. And the rest of the way, we take you through on ESPN2. So that's 9 o'clock Eastern Tuesday. And then if necessary, games four and five, Thursday, and then back here in Detroit, September 16th, 4.30 Eastern time. One point game. Here comes a soft 2-2-1 two -two press that Phoenix worked on yesterday in practice, handling this pressure. to the 2-3 zone. Good luck to Pondexter on the cross court. That's from Taylor. So Cappy with nine in the game. I tell you what, you can get an assist to Diana Tarasi because she set a heck of a screen on the top of that zone. The angle was perfect. Folks, just watch Diana Tarazi in this defense and how much ground she's trying to cover. This went from the free throw line all the way down to the block. Smith open. We thought that you needed to set some good screens to get your teammates open. What you're going to see is Tarasi set this screen right here, and that's going to allow Cappy Pondexter just a wide open look. Johnson cannot recover. Schumacher can't buy it against Ford. You got to make those. Got to make those. She missed some chippies in game one that really would have helped. Good show. Swing cash, another one. She looks good, and it looks like a swing of old. She's getting closer and closer to the all-star that came out of the University of Connecticut. Huh? Eight already. What a championship with Diana Tarazi at UConn. Here's Taylor around four. Good defense from Cheryl. She might not have the quickness, the lateral movement, but uh, smart player. Knows how to use her body. Yeah, she said, I dreamed of being certain kinds of players, but knew I didn't have the athleticism. But I've kind of figured out how to be successful. Go, let's go. Reality hits in at some point. Yeah. <laughs> For most of us, quicker than others. Schumacher left wide open. This time hits the 15-footer. I think it's yes. Good catch, good catch. Good oh, a lot of contact. Schumacher and Ford down on the block. We side two. We side two. Block out. Smith. Go, 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 Would you concede that jump shot until Katie Smith starts making it? You know, it's an unbelievable statement given the fact that she's the best three-point shooter in the history of the league, but yes, right now. Good, good, good. Stay down. Created by Keely Johnson. Cheryl Ford the recipient. She's got five. Thought that could have been an end one. She took a shot from Kelly Miller. And Shannon knew it right away. Commits the foul. Win Cash leading the way for Detroit coming back, but the trail by two. 32-30 to score. I think Detroit will win the WNBA championship this year because we're 12 women strong. We believe in each other. We believe in what we're doing out there on the floor. And we play physical. And when I say physical, I mean physical. And that's how you win championships. 5-10 left until half. Right, Kenny Smith go. trying to get him fired up in the Detroit huddle. Two-point game, Phoenix on top. Bill Lambeer in his sixth year, but heck of a player. One of the bad boys back in the late 80s, 89, 90, two NBA titles, and now a couple of WNBA titles as well. And looking for number three could happen this year. They're up one game to none in the finals here. Trail by two in the second quarter. Cheryl Reeve joins us right now, and Cheryl, an assistant coach with Bill Ambeer. A moment ago, I asked Bridget Pettis a similar question about Paul Westhead. To you, what's it like to sit on the bench next to Bill Ambeer? Uh, he's just another coach. To be honest with you, I don't. I don't think of all the other uh, Pistons bad boy stuff. All you guys make, uh, you know, a big deal of that stuff. To me, he's another coach that I'm working for. 
Coach, you guys talked the other day about uh, slowing them down in transition. They've got 10 points there already. What do you have to do? Stop turning the ball over. That, that's when they get their best transition against us. All right, Coach. Good luck the rest of the way. Thank you. I know you didn't like to see that happen to Diana Tarazi with the offensive rebound. Double digits now for D. She's got 10 in the game. She wasn't going to the bad boy stuff, was she? No, no. she didn't want any part of that. Down low, back out to Smith. Pearson, a fadeaway. That was a tough shot. Tough rebound. That is why Cheryl Ford's the best rebounder in the league, because she comes away with that kind of board. It looked like that was Phoenix's rebound until she decided it was hers. Let's, let's, let's. Recover, recover. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pearson on the miss. It's Phoenix basketball, and uh, with more on Cheryl Leaf in uh, Detroit, Rebecca. As I asked her about her relationship with the other two coaches, she said, I'm not that much different from them. From them. All three of us have egos and opinions. My presence is different. I'm not 6'10". My voice doesn't carry like theirs. What does she bring? She said, I'm the detail person. Bill and Rick don't, don't attention, pay attention to that. She said, I love being in a meeting with these two. I can say whatever I want, however I want. She said, it's extraordinarily different from any other staff she's ever been on. Yeah, and you spend time around that staff, and you realize that right away. I mean, they're, they're clearly, there's an open forum for whatever you're thinking at any time, you can express it. But it speaks volumes that she has earned the respect of those two guys. It's not an easy thing to do. She's and a very strong woman. Don't you think it's for the players, too, for the most part? Yes. There you go. Hey, penalty! And a whistle away from the ball. That's on Schumacher. We went to break with Swin Cash talking about how physical they are. They win championships with being physical. Well, Phoenix and Tangela Smith, they're having some of that today. You want to be physical with us? We'll go right back at you. Kelly Schumacher picked up her first. That's the team's fifth. So they're over the limit. And Cheryl Ford goes to the line. We're calling that. Katie Smith is not going to shoot. We're calling that. Come on, Kurt. Come on, Kurt. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Golly, she came down to the floor, though. She had hit the floor. Talking about these two coaches, well-known names. Heather Cox, you have more on them? Indeed, I do. Paul Weston and Bill Lambert's relationship dates back to the early days of their NBA careers. Westhead actually coached Lambert while Bill was playing with the Detroit Pistons. Westhead memories of Lambert? He said, well, Paul, Paul told me that Isaiah Thomas was always the focal point of their scouting reports, but Bill always surprised his Laker Nuggets team with his effective screens and his ability to step out and knock down the open jumper. Then I asked if Lambert has an impact on the matchup now. Westhead's answer, only if he suits up and plays for his squad. <laughs> Otherwise, he's just like any other coach. Yeah, I imagine so. He could knock down the, the outside J. Miller, speaking outside jumpers, a deep corner three try. Here comes Elaine Powell, ninth year player out of LSU. We'll help you. Black, black, black. Black, black, black. There's that double. Swarming defense. Well, back to the coaches for a moment. There has been rumors that Paul Westhead has been offered an assistant coaching job for P.J. Carlesmo on the Seattle staff. Bill Lambeer has made no secret of the fact that he wants to coach in the NBA. So a walking violation at that end, and then a technical foul just came. Cheryl Ford picks up the tee. So Tarazi knocks down the technical. She's got 11 in the game. It's a seven-point lead. Three points. Cheryl Three points. Ford complaining Three about points. a call or maybe a lack of one. Yeah, lack of a foul, I guess, on the double. Detroit to the man. Nice pass, nice move, great, Angela Smith. Great recognition. Pearson has given up several inches in there, so they get her posted high side, and Tangela just seals the deal. And she's got 10 in the game. They're holding her own in the paint. You saw the numbers a moment ago. If they can do that, it makes it tough for Detroit. Phoenix and a man-to-man. -man. We expected they might come with this just to keep them off balance. Pearson off the heel. She loves to play against her old team. She was traded away by Phoenix in 05. Played two and a half years with the Mercury. Great matchup. Tarazi. Oh. <laughs> Somehow, with Smith and a hand right in her face, hits the fadeaway. He's got 13. 
double-digit lead for the Mercury. Diana Tarazzi playing some ball. Very physical defender. Doesn't matter. Hi, I'm Diana Tarazzi of the Phoenix Mercury, and you're watching the WNBA Finals on ESPN. with an 11-point lead with 2.09 left to go in the half. And at the half, we're coming up. Linda Cohn, Carolyn Peck, Nancy Lieberman. And Carolyn, uh, Detroit down 11. How can they come back? Well, they're in this ball game because of rebounding. And that's, what, that's what's keeping them close. But I tell you, Nancy, Phoenix is enjoying having Tarasi on the floor. Phoenix is taking away the inside of Detroit. If it's a game of jump shots, advantage Mercury. We'll break it down in a few minutes. Plus at half, our special guest, WNBA Coach of the Year, Dan Hughes. Now let's send it back down to Terry Gannon. All right, Linda, thank you very much. Doris Burke alongside Heather Cox, Rebecca Lobo as well. Courtside, 11-point lead for Phoenix. And to me, the major difference in this game, in game one, is Phoenix is making jump shots. Yeah, they were horrendous shooting the basketball. Kathy Pondexter took a ton of shots, 28. Kara Braxton throwing some work inside. That gives them a 14 to 10 advantage points in the paint. The field goal percentage clearly in Phoenix's favor. Taylor, good luck to Miller, got hit, and she'll go to the free throw line. A foul is on Elaine Powell. Rebecca, what did Bill Lambeer talk about in the huddle? Understandably, he was very fired up. He looked at Katie Smith and said, you don't want to see the ball anymore. You stop shooting. Then to Planet Pearson, you're playing with the refs. Stop. To the team, he said, you stop playing. Get rid of the attitude. Hang up the egos. I like it. Katie Smith, one for six. And Rebecca Lobo, we have talked about this throughout the playoffs. This is a career worst year for her in terms of percentages in and outside the line. But she must continue to take shots with the rebounding prowess they have. Just put it up on the rim, Terry, and let those boarders inside go get it. Miller, 78% free throw shooter throughout the year, misses both. Yeah, Smith shooting in the 20s in terms of percentage points. Quick turnaround by Cash, tipped up. Offensive rebound, another chance. Nolan, the floater, uh-uh. She's had a tough time the first couple of games. Yeah, smarter defense by Diana Taurasi today. That's not contesting Nolan, Terry, without fouling. Battle inside, and the foul on catch. While we have a moment, a reminder, WNBA.com has the finals covered from Detroit to Phoenix. Regular updates from Diana Taurasi and Katie Smith. Expert analysis from Doris Bird, our own interactive fan voice message boards. We're your destination for all things final. Getting good stuff after game one? What you talking about? Everybody got on, on board. Nancy was on there, Carolyn, Rebecca, everybody contributing. I already know, as if I didn't read it all. 41 32, 105 left. The Detroit Shock care about their community. In celebration of the 2007 WNBA Finals, the WNBA and the Shock created a new library and computer lab at Will Rogers Elementary School. The entire squad was on hand to unveil the refurbishments and help students break in the new facility. WNBA cares, leading, inspiring, and creating positive change. Refurbishments. It's a word I don't say very often. No. Telecast. Ivory Ladder was not much bigger than those elementary school kids. <laughs> <laughs> First year, a year ago, she's playing the uh, Final Four. UNC, and now here she is in WNBA Finals. Head coaches have been there before, though. In terms of the NBA, Paul West said here for the first time in the WNBA, only second time in franchise history that Phoenix has made it to the finals. They lost to Houston when everybody was losing to Houston. Deep corner three again. Angela Smith, a big factor here in the first half. Three for four from three, Terry. And she's five of seven overall. Tangela being very efficient. 12 points in the game. Braxton left open. Good box out by the Mercury. Not really able to get the break going. Despite, just like game one, yeah. Yeah, despite constant encouragement from Paul Westhead. He just you constantly hear him screaming, go! Mazzanti, another shooter in the game. Here she is, quick three. You got it. Kelly Mazzanti, right away. They had 12 in the game one loss from behind the arc. They've already got seven. Silly, silly, silly. Get well, they're not going to quit shooting the threes, that's for sure. I mean, even when they're missing, having a tough night. Good luck. 
The easy one missed with the left hand by Cash. Can they get one more before the break? Gotta go! Closing seconds. Yeah, you gotta go, Paul. And she did. Kathy Pondexter went and then some. The lead is 16. Nolan. The heave ho at the end of the first half. What a first half. What a close for Phoenix. Kathy Pondexter, the best player off the bounce for this team. So Diana wisely gives it up with five seconds. That's a tough shot. You lose championship on those kinds of shots. Man. That shot and the deep corner fadeaway that Tarazi hit with Smith right in her face, two of the better ones you're ever going to see. But remember, Detroit, their three best comebacks this year have come against Phoenix, including the one when they were down by 16 as we send it over to Rebecca. Swain, so with two minutes to go in the half, Phil told the team you've stopped playing. How do you respond in the second half and make up this deficit? Come out and play. We have to defend. We have to rebound the ball. And when we get shot, just like that shot I dismissed, we have to make those. Pee Wee Johnson came in, gave us some great minutes. We got to keep people on the floor who are helping us win. All right, Swain, thank you. For more in the West, Heather Cox. All right, Rebecca, Diana Taurasi with 13 points already eclipsed her point total of game one. So, Diana, what has been the difference in mindset and approach in this game versus game one? We basically have to do everything Swin just said. <laughs> so I won't reiterate that, but we just have to be aggressive. You know, that's what we base our game on. When everyone's aggressive on the court, we look pretty good. You guys had an 11-point lead in game one. How do you keep the momentum and the lead in the second half of this one? You know, we got to keep on the boards. I think when we get the boards, we could go get some easy shots on the other end. And, you know, it's hard. Detroit's a good team. Thanks so much, no Dee. And, guys, she has ESP because she certainly did didn't hear what Swin said. I like it, Heather. <laughs> See, just what she said. It makes it very easy, those interviews. 16 2 run for Phoenix to close out the first half. Studio joins you next. The Palace of Auburn Hills. Michigan loses to App State last week. Good crowd this week here. They all decided to come watch the shot, trying to win another WNBA title. Tarazi with 13. A Discover Card game summary. And Doris Burke, not only Tarazi, but three players in double figures in the first half for Phoenix. None for Detroit. And how about the guards for Detroit? Nolan and Smith, three for 13. Many consider them the best backcourt in the league. Clearly, Katie Smith was reticent to take shots after she went one for six. She's got to be more aggressive. And Phoenix talked about playing that zone 15% harder and 15 percent smarter i'd say they played it about 30 to 50 percent smarter this this day we'll see what the coaches talked about at the half starting with heather cox terry the phoenix coaching staff breathing a sigh of relief telling me we survived penny taylor's three fouls now if they can keep her on the court phoenix will stay in that rover zone defense if not look for more men out of paul westhead the other emphasis contain the inside look for them to double team every time on the blocks now for more on the shock let's check in with rebecca so the nice thing about Bill and Beer Heather is that he'll tell you what he thinks. He said we're soft. We're not competing. We stopped playing with a minute and a half left in the first half. So when was the last time you did this? He said, I don't know. It's been a while. We have a lot of agendas on our team right now and a lot of attitudes. I said, will the team respond? And he honestly said, I do not know. Well, we'll see together here in the second half. Swin Cash had a solid first half with eight and now adds a deuce to that. So she's in double figures. And numbers can be deceiving. I mean, Detroit, again, on the backboard, 26-18, but they did not play their style of game. The backdoor cut, good look to Tarazi. They did not dominate the paint. The numbers were 14 to 10. Yes, it was in Detroit's favor, but it was not a dominating power game. Thrown away by Cash. Wide open. Step up in there for that. Bill will let you know what he's thinking. Detroit in a man-to-man. -man. Swin gets out and deny, and Diana makes the right read, goes back door, easy deuce, no help waiting. This time she cuts off the back door, trying to stop Tarazi. Here's Pondexter at that key three to end the first half. In and out, open two in the second. Now, Bill Ambeer takes players I think some people would shy away from, and, you know, he understands that he takes some risks. Kara Braxton inconsistent, but you're willing to coach her. Katie Smith, 15-footer, they need her to be a force in some way offensively. She's got five in the game, at least a threat from the outside. Yeah. Taylor off the back of the iron. Penny with just four in the game. She had 32 in game one. There's the double. Cash lost it out of bounds. It opens it up. It opens it up. 
Ten no. turnovers. That's great. It's been a big difference in this second game, too. The, the defensive presence inside by Phoenix. They're playing harder, but mostly, Terry, they're playing smarter. That's ridiculous. Holy cow, what a shot. There is no stopping that. Off balance, off one foot, fading away, 25 feet. Tarazi with 18. And there are certain players, Terry, who in the biggest moments make them their best moments, and she's one of them. Pearson beats Tarazi baseline. This is the easy one. Oh, it wasn't that easy, but should have made it. Smith can hit this. Nope. Nolan one on three. And lets it fly one on three and buys it. Now she can score in bunches. And she's come to grips with her takeover ability. Will we see it here in the next couple minutes? Six in the game. Pearson battling Taylor. Taylor thought she was held as the ball goes out of bounds. So did Weston. She's grabbing her body. That's why she couldn't catch it. Nolan has an NBA jump shot, folks, and I don't care how many defenders are around her. When she gets elevated, you will not contest that shot with any effectiveness. And does it in the blink of an eye. That was the first Phoenix turnover since the first quarter. She kicked the ball! She kicked the ball! She kicked the ball. And Lisa Mattingly trying to calm down she Katie Smith. Ball. You are not supposed to be overly demonstrative, and if you weren't, Let's see if they have a point. Yeah. There's it. Couldn't tell. Yeah. And this is where Lisa Mattingly had a warner. And nothing underneath. I couldn't tell, to be honest with you. It certainly didn't happen there. It was on the perimeter to defense if it happened. Give and go, fade away to Raji. A little bit much even for her. Here comes Tweedy. And the reach on Ford. Cheryl Ford had six rebounds in the first half, was two for five from the floor, but I didn't think she was very effective, especially with the style of game going up and down. Well, you wonder how much that knee is bothering her. Rebecca Lobo said, yes, it's sore. She's going to give them as many minutes, but you didn't have the sense in talking to Paul Westhead that he minded. You know, he thought he could get her in the up and down, and perhaps it helps him with her on the floor. Her first foul, first team foul here in the third. Hard foul by Ford. That's her second. The official's not biting on the flop by Pearson. Her reputation is that she flops. So good no call by Michael Price. He's not biting. And then there is the physical nature of what Detroit will bring. Bring it inside. They're going to come at you hard. So Cheryl's second. And you get that reputation. Even if it is a foul, you're not going to get the benefit of a doubt. That's exactly right. We've got to get in the car. We've got to get in the car. To play earlier in the year where Nikki Teasley pretended to be poked in the eye by a defender. And she kind of smiled at our cameras and played up to it. And I'll tell you this, calls were a little bit harder to come by for Nikki Teasley for the rest of the year. Feenstra in, they go bigger. Detroit does. Taylor both free throws. So the lead is 17. And the edge at the line to Phoenix. It was Detroit who had a huge edge in game one. 42-22 from the free throw line. So that graphic, I think, an important one. Tarazi trying to stop Phoenix. The big size advantage to Katie. 6'8", 240 pounds. Good luck checking that on that particular play. Penetration back out. They do it so well. In fact, when they drive to the basket, they're not really looking for the bucket. They're looking for the kick out first. He's exactly right. Look at this. Eight threes made already. Four for three. Way off. What the hell is that? Don't know. Han Dexter didn't have the numbers. How quick does she oh. get that shot off? Almost not even in her hands yet. Girl is playing some basketball, and you better have a short memory when you're coming off the kind of game she had, and she does. 21 in the game for Diana Tarazi. Four, four, four. 
full timeout. Detroit. And Bill Lambeer says he needs a full timeout to talk this over. Diana Taurasi is as good a basketball player as you'll find, as mentally tough, as physically tough as they come, and highly skilled. The read, the backdoor, easy deuce. The perimeter jump shot with somebody in a grill. Who cares? Diana can play. Got to get stops, away. rebound, and make shots. The last three things Bill Lambert just talked about. 21-point lead for Phoenix, and they named that Lindsey Price, rookie of the year before the game. Lindsey Harding was leading the way before an injury, but she has got the kind of athleticism that Deanna Nolan has. Will develop a jump shot with time. This is a special young player in the WNBA. Star of the Chicago Sky with Rebecca Lobo right now. Armenti Price, the rookie of the year. Armenti, you guys did not make the playoffs this year, but Chicago won nine more games than, than you did the year before. What was the most exciting part of your first year in the WNBA? Um, I guess you got to just say just being here, uh, meeting these wonderful players. I know uh, one time, the first time I seen Tina Thompson, I ran and gave her a hug. You know, I don't think she was kind of shocked about that. But it's just amazing playing with these awesome players and, and being able to say I'm a part of this. You defended Diana Taurasi a couple times this year in your meetings. What's the key to trying to slow her down? Well, I think just staying on her at all times. You never know how far back she's going to shoot, so you got to stay on her at all times. All right, Armithy, thank you so very much. Terry, the third pick in the draft, the rookie of the year. Not a bad debut. Armithy Price and Dan Hughes, by the way, named uh, coach of the year. San Antonio uh, got to the playoffs and almost beat Phoenix. There he is, working for ESPN Radio with Mark Kestesher. Got 20 of them first place votes, but the trade for Becky Hammond is so key. Even for D, that was a little quick. Yes. So they get it back. You know, Kelly Miller is hustling all over the floor. That's her fifth rebound from the point guard position. Not backing off the three. This is a deuce for Pondexter. About half their attempts have been from beyond the arc. The foul by Miller and the foul. Nice job by Penny Taylor to read and react as she went for that basketball. I, I just cannot be more impressed with what Kelly Miller has done today. She has not made a shot up until this particular point. Great read by Taylor. Everybody comes to the basketball in an attempt to rebound it, so she kicks it down. But how many deflections have we seen Kelly Miller have? Yep. She's got three assists, zero turnovers at the pace they play. That's ridiculous. Second foul on Deanna Nolan, third team foul. Here's the combination that was effective the other night. Feenstra and Braxton on the floor at the same time. Johnson with the miss. And that's a combination that Bill Ambeer rarely went to, if at all, during the regular season. Smith with a hand in her face. The threes are raining in for Phoenix. Don't throw it to the corner! Tangela with 15. Oh, we just saw this one. Nope. One and done. Uh-oh. Yep, there it is. You knew as soon as she got open. This is easy right now for Phoenix. Do you use another one? I mean, I don't know if you use a timeout. He's talking about them not playing hard, Bill Lambeer. He is going to use one here. It'll be a 20. 20. It's Let's a go. quick one. We quitting? Are we quitting? 20 stays. We're Angela Smith making it a 70 to 42 lead. Bill Lambeer asking his team during the last huddle, are we quitting? Did we quit? Begin to wonder. The high low taken away by Schumacher. Here comes Tarazi. Nobody guarding Penny. Wide open. They get the tip. Kelly Miller yet again, Terry, keeping the ball alive. You know, I know they're just scrambling, but it's not a bad idea to watch in game one just to try to tip the ball off the glass because it's very difficult to rebound against the big bodies of Detroit. You just keep it in play, you got the quickness. That's exactly right. Knock it loose, and they will hustle to the basketball. Kelly Miller has got to have at least six deflections in this game. Nolan continues to struggle. At least during the half-court offense. Here's Deanna. Uh -uh. Braxton, positive sign for Bill Ambeer. Yeah, that's a good response. Are we quitting? So second chance opportunities would tell you, no, we're not quitting. <laughs> Don't even think about blinking on the way back to play D. Wow. 
This game is about entertainment, and there's not a better player to put on a show than Diana Taurasi. Doing it today. Schumacher the foul. Well, she struggled in game one. We made the parallel to her debut at a Final Four in the national semifinal. One for 15. She's looking at the crowd as if to say, I'm back. What Detroit did very well in game one is you look at the numbers. 35 for Tarazi and Pondexter is stop the break early and not necessarily fast breaks where you get run outs and easy layups. But right now, right there, they stopped that. They stopped the ball in game one before it got to half court, not in game two. There you go again. Forget about it. It's just a three-point shooting contest right now for Tarazi. No one's guarding her. She's got 27. Forget about layup lines. Let her just shoot uncontested threes. Game of horse. And you've got E. Block, but the foul. From behind, Schumacher's third. Hey. 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 20. Seven already today. She only had 10. And that was during a run in the third quarter. She was scoreless in the first half the other night. And we've got 12 and a half minutes to play. Yeah, now, yeah. She, she may not be on the floor in the fourth quarter to set a finals record for points in a game. But if it were close, she would be. They're just they're, She plays with a joie de vie that is just so attractive. I mean, just a smile on her face most times. There's a showmanship, a flair that makes her so much fun to watch. She's the first player in women's college basketball history, Terry, that I thought her appeal crossed genders. There were male friends of mine yeah. who said, I'd pay to see her play. No doubt. There's no question. And it's not only a joy, it's, it's, a, it's a genuine aspect to her game, even in the tough times, a frustration the other night. I mean, you, every emotion, you can see it across her face. And even that was entertaining. Six turnover for Phoenix. We check in with Heather Koch very quickly. Well, you talk about Diana's personality, and I talked to her yesterday. Does she change the type of game she plays because of the foul trouble she endured in game one? And leave it to a champion to say, not at all. I stay just as aggressive as I ever am. If I'm not aggressive, what's the point? And clearly, it's paying off with the career game tonight. Detroit, one of its last 11. But Heather, we questioned that a little bit the other night. Jessica has to play smart basketball. Yes, I agree. And she has played smarter. That's my point. In that zone, that rover, she was far more selective with when she fouled. How about the ball movement offensively for Phoenix getting anything they want right now? I know Mazzanti missed the open three, but they're creating great looks. Okay. Uh, 42! 42! Lada matched up. Good strip by Ivory. Took it right away. It's appropriate she wear the number three because stylistically she plays a little like Babe Ruth did. You know what I mean? That sort of. I didn't know we were going to Babe Ruth today. Well, isn't he larger than life? I he guess, was the larger yes. than life character. Wasn't around then, though. Yeah, you're a little younger than that. Didn't have a good jump. He wasn't good from three points. <laughs> Johnson making sure she's beyond the arc. Braxton and Tarazi. The loose ball foul. It's on Tarazi grabbing the jersey of Kara Braxton. That's her third. And the team's third as well. I know what you mean, though. Everything she does is larger than life. To the point where sometimes you say, want to settle down a little bit on the floor. But that's not how she is. Yeah. And it's worked for her, obviously. So why, the rest right now. That's why you disagree with keeping her on the floor with the 3,000 game one. Because she can only play one way. Yes. To ask her to be smart and kind of haul in that aggressiveness, I'm not sure she could even do it if she tried. Ross Claire! Ross Claire! Ross Claire! Take your time a little bit. Wait, Ross Claire! Tuck it in, Mass. Tuck it in, Mass. I don't know. Did you where they go without D on the floor? Yeah, now 2 3 zone. Snell follows up her own shot. 
And the loose ball foul against Phoenix. We go the other way as we send it to Heather again. And Kelly Miller, one of six from the floor, but making an impact really in every other area of the game. Kelly, what's been the key to dictating tempo for Mercury today? I mean, I think we just, you know, come out and play our game. We've gotten stops. Um, we play pretty good defense, and, you know, we're, you know, really pushing the ball and you know, hitting the open shot, so that's been key for us today. Let's talk about your teammate. What a drastic difference between games one and games two for Diana Tarasi. What do you think the difference has been? I mean, you know, she's a great player. You know, I mean, she got in foul trouble the first game. I mean, you know, tonight, you know, this is this is the way she usually plays, and she's playing great. You know, um, she's doing so many things for us, so she's so instrumental to our team. But, um, you know, every, everyone's playing well tonight, and we're just, you know, playing our type of ball. Putting you nicely down. We'll let you enjoy your breather. Thanks. All right, Heather Pondexter hit on the three-point attempt with nine on the shot clock. Ivory Latta, that was not a very good foul. You know, Diana Shirazi, her parents, she is the daughter of immigrants. I remember talking to Gino Oriema about him, about that once, because he is as well. And there's some similarities in personality between those two. He said, quite frankly, he said, as an immigrant, you always feel a bit of a chip on your shoulder, a need to prove yourself. And I think you could sort of see that in her approach. Dead. Keeper in soccer and from Tarazi, Italy. Yeah, when they designed her shoe, Nike gave her her own personal shoe in tribute to her father. She had them put a soccer ball motif on the basketball shoe. Big foul in terms of uh, fouling a three-point shooter. Cardinal roll, so it's 79-47. Nolan. Got another one. So Deanna's trying to bring back Detroit. She's in double figures. And I know the lead is huge right now for Phoenix. But in most games, you do have a chance to come back against the Mercury. At least a chance because they don't slow it down. They keep playing the same pace. Exactly. No one's got another one. So she's heating up the end of the third. We'll see. That'll do it. Huge third quarter for the Phoenix Mercury and Diana Tarazi. 79-51. Tarazi with 27 here, just outside of Detroit. here in game two especially in the second half in the third quarter they outscored the shot 31 to 19. Diana Tarazi had 14 in the third quarter herself and we take you on our AOL inside the game Doris. Watch Diana Tarazi to watch her hands sell that you're going to go back door by pretending to go for the perimeter pass hands up looks like she's going for it simple stuff now watch the step back move that right foot goes right to the lead foot of Swim Cash. She's got nothing to do but react by going backwards and boom, stick that jump shot, made three. You can't, you made the point on that particular shot, Terry. You simply can't guard when you get that ball off that quickly. There is no defense. Now it couldn't have been Gino who taught her that fake with the hands because it was Swim Cash who was guarding her. <laughs> he would have taught Swim too. Yeah. Seven of 14 beyond the arc for Phoenix just in the third quarter. And Detroit for the game, two of 17 beyond the arc. Here's the, the floater with the left hand over Tarazi. Yeah, let's remember that this is a Detroit team that always seems to respond when the chips are down. And sometimes they wait till the chips are down to respond. How about this? Pearson, who had 26 in game one, that's her first bucket. Wow. From the corner, nope. You're shocked when it doesn't go in. You cannot get comfortable with your Phoenix. Detroit wants to make a push early in this period to see if they can't get back in it. A small lineup on the floor right now for Bill Lambeer in terms of the guards. Here's Pearson doing work inside. Nope. And Miller hauls it in. But you've got Nolan, you've got Johnson, and Powell on the floor together. Feenstra is your big body inside. And Pearson can float. Hondexter oh. off for Katie Feenstra. Wow. 16 in the game for Cappy. Play in D, play in D. This is such a game, basketball is, of momentum and runs. Phoenix so confident right now here in game two. Pearson the fadeaway. 
Pierce got four. You know what? I, I, I like Pearson. This is a point Rebecca Lobo made to me off the air once. She said that Pearson never reacts to the officials. Now, I thought she got hit on the previous possession. Didn't let it bother. Ran back play D, then made the shot on the next attempt. Got to give that kid credit. And good call by Rebecca to notice it. Are you in the habit of relaying what announcers say to you off the air? Yeah, why? Have I done that a lot? Just okay. let me know. <laughs> Miller, the follow. I just like Pearson's the way she approaches a game. She's very tough. She fits in perfectly here. And she plays hard all the time. You're going to give her credit for that. The difference in second chance points, game one to game two, startling. On Dexter with no one back to challenge her. 12-4. They had 10 fast break points in the first half. Now it is 12-4. So if you're Bill Lambeer, you find out a lot about your team here in the fourth and what they've got left. You heard him say earlier, did we quit yet? Are we quitting? Tarazi, two wide open. She's got eight rebounds, Tarazi does. Four fouls as well. The Detroit Bigs were dominant in game one. Flat out 59 points amongst that trio along with 18 rebounds. Today, it's been a bit of a different story. Cheryl Ford, if you want to add another name to the inside players, only has five. Good cap, good cap, good cap. Gotta go, gotta go! Gotta shoot it, shot clock running out. Go back, go back. Got the shot off, but threw it right to Taylor. And now you hear something you never hear from Paul Weston. He said, pull it out. <laughs> Run some clock? What, are you kidding me? There you go. Behind the screen, Dean's got another one. You're in. 30 in the game. Let's go. Get in. We know you are. Let's go. Lambeer going to Braxton off the bench, who's taking a while to get to the scorer's table. Just thinking, she doesn't look any too happy to be checking into this basketball game. Took him a couple times just to get her to stand up. Hold on. Hands upon Dexter and out of bounds. Nelly, Nelly, get these. Diana Walker also off the bench for Detroit. And with 6.03 left, might be looking ahead to game three. Yeah. You know, things, I mean, excuse me, Braxton couldn't tell enough people yesterday that she's tired of us talking about her inconsistencies. This is. Well, the answer would be to be consistent then. Mm. And I just, you know, this is a player, Kara Braxton, who has got first team WNBA skills. It's really about consistent hey, effort on a night by night basis. We got a sub in now? Your corner. Straight zone O. All right. Hey, Kirsch! Now waiting at the scorers table to I'll check in. 6.02. On the clock till the end of this one. Game three in Phoenix on Tuesday night on ESPN2. Game four then would be on Thursday in Phoenix. And then a week from Sunday, if necessary, game five. Back here in Detroit. Braxton. Quite. Nothing. Nothing going right now for Detroit. Momentum. Intensity all on the part of Phoenix. Frustration on the faces of the shot this afternoon. Winning the WBA championship would mean a great deal to myself, to my teammates, to the whole city of Phoenix. It's been the one goal that we've been chasing all year. It's taken a lot of hard work, a lot of sweat and, and tears, and I think we're finally here and we have a great chance of winning it. Tough day in Michigan. Tarazi with 30 in the game to lead the shock. 
But the Wolverines getting knocked off, at least at this point, once again by Oregon up the road in Ann Arbor after the loss last week. And here we are, 88-55. The shock losing game two. There's a foul. Walker will go to the line. Penny Taylor with her fourth. I think when you look at this game, Doris, we kind of touched on it to start the game. It's been more about emotion execution than it's been about X's and O's. I mean, it, Phoenix playing much harder today and knocking down shots. Yes, much harder and much smarter. Yep. Diana Tarazi did not commit the silly fouls in the middle of that rover defense. I thought they did a better job of jamming Detroit's inside players. They were going to concede the jump shots to the perimeter shooters. Katie Smith is just two for seven. Remember what Rebecca Lobo said, he can't not shoot shots. That was what Bill Lambert, she's got to take shots. She's taking one in the second half. Snell wide open with this one. But she struggled, she's a shooter too. Through the playoffs she has. Peewee pressing the issue, the block by Smith and the foul. So Tangela with her second. Remember we go back to Phoenix, for games three and four on ESPN2 the rest of the way. So you don't have to worry about switching networks and 9 Eastern on Tuesday, then 8.30 on Thursday before, if necessary, coming back to Detroit next Sunday. Forage. And those two, Nolan and Smith, in the first half, Deanna's heated up just a little bit in the second, but they struggled again in the first half. Combined 8 for 25 on the afternoon for the two outstanding guards from Detroit. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Detroit has clearly conceded this game. I mean, they're thinking game three. Bill Lambeer, I think, is sitting over there, kind of leaning back in his chair. Miller. She gets into the party beyond the arc. Biggest losing margin by the shock in the playoffs. It lost to Sacramento by 24, and they're going to top that unless they make a comeback here. All one, two. Kara all the way to the hole. No one challenged it. Braxton with the deuce, 91 59. So he, with four and a half minutes left, a little less than that, what are your thoughts as you look ahead to the series? I know both of us. Kind of thought Detroit and Snell puts one in because of the matchup problems that were so apparent in game one had the edge here in game two had not played out that way. No exactly. I mean, they, this is a Phoenix team that I think again playing their style. It's a simple game. So winner is the loser reason why they've made shots today played better defense. Rashid Wallace in the house watching the shock here and Johnson Phillips the other day who's been a big fan and comes to a lot of games. And Wallace courtside for game two of the WNBA Finals. And here comes the shot. There's the Dell. That's what worked all day long and the difference between game one and game two yep. defensively. I think you're going to have to see a Detroit team that makes and takes shots. I mean, I don't think the game plans will change too much. They still have the decided advantage inside. Cheryl Ford, who has not uh, been given a ton of minutes here. You wonder how her knee will respond. Do they go with her again at the outset of game three? But you made the point in our open. This is, a t this is about a stylistic battle, a contrast in styles, the power game of Detroit versus the up-tempo game of Phoenix. Phoenix able to get out in the open and knock down threes today. That's why they have dominated 93-59. Listening in to the Detroit huddle as we were in break, it was a very quiet timeout. On the other end, Miller to Rossi getting the rest here. The final three minutes, 13 seconds left, 93-59. So a chance for the Mercury to go over the 100-point mark yet again. Remember, Paul Westhead, you think about all his teams on the NBA level and Loyola Marymount on the college level with Hank Gathers, Bo Kimball, that one, Corey Gaines, who's an assistant coach for him now, was the point guard on that team. 
Joyce, they averaged 122 yes. points a game. Not 100 a game, not 100, 122. Yeah. There's Corey. In a 40-minute yeah, right. basketball That's game. We're not talking about the NBA. 48 minutes, 40 minutes. Hey, Corey, uh, instrumental with this staff in teaching that philosophy. And, and it is more of a philosophy than it is, say, a a method or it's not you've got to be at point a or point b at this specific time it's more of buying in to what you have to do to play this style and never stop running well in fact i was surprised because paul west had said detroit won't slow us down he said basically make or miss we decide whether or not we're going to have the temple where we want it to be i'm going to go back to something i said in game one because bill lambeer said this he said listen we're going to get as many possessions maybe more than Phoenix. They've taken three more shots right now than Phoenix has. Provided we hold them to a decent percentage and we shoot around the same. He said our second chance opportunity should win the game. Well, guess what? Today those numbers haven't played. Six point spread advantage for Bill Lambert's team in the paint, so not much. Bird didn't come all the way across. Second chance points. Mercury have the advantage, wow. 13 no. to 10. And field goal percentage, it is like favor of Phoenix weeks. right now. They've shot the ball well. There is the second chance. How stunning is that with no. all the power they have inside? Actually, that should never happen. Even if Phoenix wins, they should have more second chance points than Detroit. They've taken more threes than twos. In the game. Jen Lacey, by the way, into the game and missed the free throw. Ms. Andy misses the three. Yeah. Jen, Jen, Jen. So if you're Bill Lambeer and you're getting ready for game three, what the heck do you say to your team? You didn't have much to say in that huddle. No, I think clearly, you know, one of the things they have got to make an adjustment. Phoenix was much better in that zone. They collapsed on their shooters. They had such effectiveness with Glenette Pearson attacking that mid post area and making those cuts. I think the adjustments come from them clearly against that zone. What do they do with Smith and Nolan to get them more started on the offensive end? 42! 42, Maz! Good job, Cap. And remember, Tarazi in game one had the three quick fouls. In fact, ended up with four fouls in the first half. It's a fine line sometimes, mm. winning or losing, and even losing by this much. The tone that was set early in the game the other night. Remember when we were talking to Cheryl Reeves, the assistant coach for, for Detroit, she said they absolutely, we, she was confident that they wouldn't get up of, upward of 90 points. Well, guess what? They're at 98, or 96, excuse me. Ben Derevjanic also off the bench for Phoenix. Here she is with the ball. To Lacey, blocked by Braxton. And it's Detroit basketball. You did your job. The only team to win on the road in this postseason in the East or the West is Phoenix. They had two wins in each of their first two series. One at Seattle, one at San Antonio. So that record loss in the finals. A couple of other records with all those records being set in game one. Here in game two, Phoenix with 16 three-pointers made 44 attempted. That's what they blew away the record. And now Bill Lambeer has got an uphill task because his team, and he's preached home court advantage. Well, Detroit, by splitting here at home, has essentially given up at least a bit of home court advantage. They have yet One left, to three. win on the road in the playoffs this season. 0-2. Their points per game significantly down, and the percentage is down as well. And Phoenix is the only team to win on the road in the playoffs so far this year. So... They came here most likely in their minds to win one out of two. Mm. And that's what they're going to do. Johnson. That's a three. The Pee Wee who got the start in game one. Three of 20. Three of 20. <laughs> that's unbelievable. And they'll prolong it as Snell commits the foul. So that's her second. 34.1 left as they head for the exits here at the Palace. Deep put on a show. And you talk about Phoenix and what they can do offensively. 
Penny Taylor has 32 the other night. Today, she's quiet. She's got she's nine. She's solid, yes. but quiet. Oh, yes. And it's Taraji who goes for 30 plus. And Pond Dexter again is in the mix. So they can beat you a number of different ways on offense. Yeah, you know, it gives some credit. I, I don't want to oversell this point, but Kelly Miller, who is the least talked about player, Tanzo Smith is in the conversation because of what she gives her. But Kelly Miller today, her numbers were outstanding. And I don't know how many deflections she had, but that's a great point of hustle and setting the tone and setting her teammates up. Look at this, 13 points, nine rebounds, five assists. Does she have a turnover? Because late into this game, she did not have a turnover. She's also the key to that fast break many times, too, because she'll beat you end to end. She'll beat you back on defense and then start the break and beat you down the floor. Five assists, one turnover. Final 24. And they'll just go ahead and pace this one off. 98 to 70. The win here in game two for the Phoenix Mercury. It was 108 to 100 in game one. They won't hit the century mark. I'm going to throw you the ball. I'm going to throw you the ball. You give me the ball, I'm going to let the shot clock will run out. And that's what Bill Lambeer wanted, so the shot clock would not run out. So, of course, then it adds to your turnovers. See, you don't want to turn it over. <laughs> and you never listen to the opposing coach. But he was right on that one. So the biggest losing margin by the shot in the playoffs. Good game. See you out there. See you out there. Good game. And we will see you out in Phoenix. So total turnaround here in game two. Tarazi dominates. Phoenix having it their way throughout the game. Great start. And they finished that way 98 to 70. They came out incredibly relaxed. A little bit more poised, I thought, than they were in game one. We talked about it. We thought she quick shot the basketball, the foul trouble, kept her out of the game. When you keep her in the game, this is the kind of thing you can do. The Cola Bulls move in the game. Well, there were plenty coming from D. One of the better showmen in the game. Deep range on the three, post up ability, an exceptional passer. And you get a little mojo when you got somebody like that on your team. Watching her today, I think I agree with Westhead, though. There is no such thing as a quick shot from her. <laughs> yeah. I mean, they, that release is as quick as any in the game. As we send it to Heather Cox with Tarasi. And what an amazing turnaround after 10 points in game one. Tonight, Diana, 30 points. How did you change your approach? Um, just being aggressive, really. And, you know, being in foul trouble kind of, you know, took a little of the of my aggressiveness away but today I think we all came out aggressive so it helped everyone at what point did you know this would be a special shooting night for you <laughs> I think it was a special night for our team you know first fine finals win and probably in team history I don't know if we won one uh, before so not only that but it gave us a lot of confidence knowing now that you know we can't beat Detroit we, we had not in the past and now you get to head to Phoenix where you're yeah. undefeated in the playoffs what will it take and how much is of an advantage is it at home right it's kind of scary waking up a sleeping giant like Detroit like this so we know they're going to come, you know, full force. They're, they're a really great team. So we just have to do uh, what we've been good at the whole year, rebound and run. All right, we'll see you on Tuesday thanks. for Game 3. Thanks, Dee. All right, thanks, Heather. And she's right, first finals win, because back in 98 when they went to the finals against Houston, it was one game and out, and that was it. So Houston won one of their four titles back then. Phoenix hadn't been here since. Happy Pondexter, the entire crew, really, getting into it. And getting into the party somehow, some way. Detroit's got to find a way to come back Tuesday night, game three in Phoenix. The studio, Linda Cohn, and the gang upstairs take you through on the other side of this break, 98 to 70. Phoenix, a winner on the road here in game two. Stay with us. So the Mercury defeat the Shock here at the Palace of Auburn Hills by 28 points to tie up the best of five WNBA finals at one as they head to Phoenix for at least the next two. And you know what, Carolyn Peck? I mean, a year ago, the Shock actually lost two WNBA finals games by 20 or more points. They still went on and beat Sacramento in five. So who knows? Well, they've got to start out, Linda, the way that they did in game one, and that was with rebounding. But rebounding is not going to be enough because even though they're getting putbacks here, they did it inside. They continued to pound inside because Phoenix wasn't hitting perimeter shots. Well, tonight was a different story. Look at the box out by Tangela Smith on Planet Pearson. She's going to get physical and get mu get muscled down low. And then when you get rebounding like this from your point guard, watch Kelly Miller fly through here. Superman! 
That's that was pretty nice. awesome. That was really nice. You like that? <laughs> That's pretty awesome. But I think that was what was the difference in this game. Rebounding, they narrowed the gap. It was 18 differential in game one, only nine in game two. And Detroit didn't get anything of any significance, Nancy, from the perimeter. Well, they didn't get anything on the perimeter, but I, the thing that really struck me, and you can see what these guys did in this game as opposed to game one, a lot of that time was taken by the 16 minutes that Cheryl Ford played. The reason they couldn't rebound and do their thing defensively is because I thought the spacing of the Mercury was absolutely fantastic. That's why Kelly Miller is able to get in that gap and get to the rim. Tangela Smith was the X factor. Again, 18 points, 10 rebounds. We talked about what Miller did. And Cappy, she only has a quiet 18 points. But tonight was all about Diana Taurasi playing at a level that we would expect legends to play at. She lifted her team. By the way, Detroit had all the pressure in this game. They had to win game two to keep the home court advantage. Well, Nancy, I've got to tell you now, Diana Taurasi stepped up. But then on the other side for Detroit, Bill Embeer, myself, you, we talked about the inconsistency of Kara Braxton. Where is Katie Smith? She brought 22 points in game one. She's got to bring it. She's got to help Deanna Nolan carry the load. If they're getting the rebounding and the boards inside, they've got to get consistent scoring from the perimeter. Well, then I'm going to hit Nolan and Smith because they didn't bring the goods tonight in a very important basketball game. You mentioned consistent scoring from the perimeter that Detroit did not have three of 20 from three-point range. But scoring, well, that was provided by, among others, on the Mercury, none other than Kathy Pondexter. We'll be right back. ESPN's presentation of the WNBA Finals, brought to you by Toyota. Moving forward, Gatorade Thirst Quencher. Gatorade, is it in you? And Discover Card. Get the new Discover Motiva card today. The 28 point loss by Detroit tied for the worst loss in WNBA Finals history. Remember LA over Charlotte back in 01? All right, so we have a whole, we had a best of three now, let's face it. And here's how it goes after the teams split the first two. Game three, you can see, in fact, you can see the rest of the games on ESPN2, but make sure you're with us Tuesday, 9 Eastern, for that pivotal game three coming to you live from Phoenix. That's where we will be for the next two. All right, let's look ahead, ladies, and I'll start with you, Nancy Lieberman. What should we expect? in game three well I would expect that the Mercury will stay with their same game plan I thought they did a fantastic job of taking away the inside making the post players make choices with the basketball you have to give up something Carolyn I thought they gave up the outside shot it did not work for Detroit you can't shoot eight for 25 between Nolan and Smith well Nancy I think you're exactly right Detroit cannot give up the outside shot to the Phoenix Mercury. They've got to continue to rebound strong. They got to take care of the basketball. And I think that after a loss like this, Nance, Bill Lambeer is going to ignite the shot and it's going to get hot in Phoenix. Well, let me tell you what gets hot. The fact that the Mercury only had nine turnovers, so they're getting much more, many more shots than they wanted, that, that they do want within their offense. And the fact that they were only out rebounded by nine in this game speaks volumes of their aggression. Quickly, the experience of Detroit in a big spot on the road, can they come through and will that help? It's huge. They're, they, they're proven winners. They've won two championships. They have that experience, but they don't have that three-point shooting, I believe, to match the Mercury. Well, I think that Detroit has the experience, but the Phoenix has got the momentum, and I think that that momentum now going home plays to the, fa the favor of the Phoenix Mercury. All right, I can't wait for Tuesday. I don't know about you. For Nancy Lieberman and Carolyn Peck, I am Linda Cohn. We're so glad you spent this afternoon with us, but so much more WNBA Finals action coming up, remember, Tuesday. The WNBA Finals continuing Game 3, 9 Eastern, ESPN 2. Coming up next, College Football Primetime presented by Hampton. Notre Dame against Penn State. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For our entire crew, this is Linda Cohn saying goodnight from Detroit now. Let's throw it back to Reese Davis. Reese, take it away.